Howdy, the Immortalium here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Osamu Tezuka's Barbara. Uh, yes, I know, another Tezuka review. Hope you guys aren't getting sick of them. Now, about Barbara, uh, well, well, this is published by uh, Digital Manga Publishing, and it was uh, funded through Kickstarter. This is a little different to the other Kickstarter Tezuka releases that I've been reviewing recently, but I'll get more into that once I actually discuss the release of this. So, let's start out with the story. So, what is the story of Barbara? Well, it's set in the 1970s, the early 1970s, which is when it was written. And this is a time in Japan when there was a lot of social unrest, a lot of political unrest. A lot of Japanese were dissatisfied with their government and how they were partially involved with the Americans being able to invade uh, Vietnam. There was a lot of unrest happening at the time and uh, protests. A famous author, Yosuke Mikura, he finds a woman uh, around a train station and this woman will be our titular character, Barbara. He brings Barbara home and as the story progresses uh, we do find a lot more about her past. We start to realize that she's not as she seems to be. Uh, that there's a lot more to her than meets the eye and that Yosuke is actually in some trouble with her. I should be mention the fact that at the beginning of the story it is presented episodically. Uh, an event happens each chapter to do with either Yosuke or to do with Barbara and her history and you know it's meant to kind of develop them a bit. Barbara's development I was relatively okay with but Yosuke's I found kind of awkward in earlier in the manga. It seems that in the early chapters he has some kind of psychological disorder particularly to do with women uh, to do with attractive women. We don't really see that expanded upon later in the manga, which I found a bit odd. It seems kind of like Osama Tezuka was introducing this aspect to his character that essentially was unnecessary, uh, that it was unnecessary to manga and it would have been better to start the main story earlier on. I found these earlier stories in and of themselves, well, uh, rather uninteresting or bland, I should say. Maybe not necessarily uninteresting, more bland. Uh, in that they seem very familiar territory for me and for Tezuka. I really didn't start to get into the story until chapter 6, which is where the kind of more ongoing story begins to present itself, where we find out more about Barbara, about Barbara's effects on Yosuke, uh, etc, etc. So chapter 6 onwards I actually found really engaging. Um, I was gripped in the story, I was gripped in the drama, and I became more connected with Yosuke, who up to that point I hadn't really connected with at all. I'd just simply seen him as brutish, I'd seen him as abusive, and I'd seen him as psychologically disturbed. But from that point onwards I began to sympathize with him, I began to sympathize with how he couldn't really figure out the events that were happening around him, how he needed to deal with that, etc, etc. And Barbara herself was a very interesting character. Admittedly, rather disjointed. But that's Tezuka's intentions with her. Uh, she isn't meant to be a very solid character. She's meant to be rather uh, fluid in personality, in her actions, etc, etc. She's supposed to be a mystery. In discussing the story, I also have to bring up the ending, which I actually have to say is one of the more satisfying Tezuka endings uh, that I've seen in his manga. Uh, quite often, as much of a fan as I am of Osamu Tezuka, I would admit that a lot of his endings either come out of nowhere or, you know, seem a bit underdeveloped or short or sudden. Uh, but this, I thought the ending was very satisfactory. It made a great point, uh, developed on a great theme that I had been working on uh, throughout the manga. And uh, I really liked the message that was with it. And I thought it served the characters themselves rather well. And it also helped that there was a very nice little manga artist cameo in it as well. So, in terms of the story, uh, I found the story itself very engaging once it actually began to pick up steam. Those first few chapters, not too engaging, uh, but stick with it, it will get better. And I, I found myself getting engrossed in the world that Tezuka created. Uh, now, artistically, this is a, a senin manga, and this would be a few years after he began making senin manga. So, as might be imagined, uh, he's actually developed his uh, art pretty well. Now there's a lot of nudity, so I'm just trying to find a good picture. As you can see, slightly more realistic looking characters, nice level of detail, and of course great panel arrangement as associated with Osamu Tezuka. Now there are a few moments that I found a bit awkward. In particular, it has to do with Barbara herself, the way she's drawn. Now most of the characters are proportionally correct in terms of their body. 
but Barbara herself has a little bit of an odd way that she's drawn. So, particularly at the beginning of the manga, and at certain points throughout the manga, based on Yosuke's view of her, uh, she kind of looks slightly uh, cartoonish, I should say, in terms of how her uh, how large her head is in comparison to her body. That does actually play into the way that Yosuke views her though, because later in the manga, when his views on her begin to change, she actually changes artistically in the manga uh, to represent Yosuke's viewpoint of her. Uh, a good example of that would be in this panel right here. Uh, as you can see there, she fits in a lot better with the art style of the manga. She looks more uh, correct in terms of uh, physicality, in terms of body proportions, etc, etc. And that's to do with the way that Yosuke views her. So from that perspective, I understand why Tezuka did that. I just think that the earlier appearance of her could have been adjusted slightly to fit in with the uh, art style of the manga a bit better. Uh, but in general, I was very satisfied with the art style of, his, uh, of this manga. I've always admired his Senen look. Uh, so I'm very pleased to see a kind of well-developed style of it. Now to discuss uh, Digital Manga's treatment of this. It is interesting to note that this is a reprint. This was actually the second manga that they funded through Kickstarter and the first one that was funded uh, to translate it. The first one, Swallowing the Earth, it was a reprint that they funded. But with Barbara, uh, this was the first time that Kickstarter was used to uh, fund a manga being published by them. And uh, because of that, there are a few differences in comparison to how they would later release manga. Uh, for example, just like with Swallowing the Earth, uh, this has a foreword by Frederick L. Schott, who is uh, a translator and a uh, friend of uh, Osama Tezuka's. He uh, kind of discusses uh, a lot of the themes of the manga. He kind of gets you prepared for the themes presented in the manga, as well as the abuse of nature of uh, Yosuke. Uh, which is very good, actually, because um, if he hadn't prepared me for the Yosuke's abuse of nature, I might have uh, had an even more difficult time getting into those initial chapters. Uh, but uh, beyond that, you know, he presents a lot of nice information, and actually it would be well worth going back to read the foreword once you've actually finished reading the manga. Uh, beyond that, there isn't too much else to discuss in terms of presentation. They have a special thanks page. But that's it. They don't have um, any afterword by Osama Tezuka himself as they've done later in their uh, manga releases. And they don't have at the back any list of when this was published. Although nicely uh, in the af in the foreword, uh, Frederick Elsho does mention the publishing dates. So you do still have the publishing dates. It's just that they're hidden within the foreword rather than having their own section like in later uh, manga releases. In terms of trim size, it is approximately the same trim size as all of their uh, other uh, releases. So if I'll show you that, you know, it's uh, a good bit bigger than a standard Tonkaban, which is nice. It allows the art to breathe. And particularly, there are a lot of pages in this manga where there's a lot of panels. And just being able to have these larger trim sizes does allow those uh, play pages to feel less cluttered. Uh, because uh, there are a lot of panels on some pages. Just build, it allows it to be able to breathe easier. Uh, now, the other thing that's worth noting is that because of the fact that this is an older release, uh, this actually does contain uh, some uh, page numbers, which is something that, oddly enough, the digital manga seem to have abandoned in their later uh, releases. This is something I want to bring to their attention at some point, um, but I'll get to that at some point. Uh, suffice to say that in this release there are page numbers. So, it is a slightly different release than uh, what we've become accustomed to in terms of the later Tezuka Kickstarters. Uh, but it's a pretty nice release and all. And the paper quality itself is very nice as well. It's a uh, higher quality than the original release of Barbara. Uh, with stronger whites and uh, kind of a crisper feel to the pages. So overall, very nice release. So, overall, what did I think of Barbara? Um, Barbara, once I got into it, really did grab me and hook me. And if it was just that section, um, I would hold this manga in a far higher regard. Uh, but admittedly, uh, a lot of the earlier part of this manga I just didn't feel engaged with. And to be honest, there's a lot of it that I feel could have been excised to create uh, a trimmer, uh, more sleek manga. 
And because of that, that does deduct a few marks from it. But overall, I think that if you're a fan of Osama Tezuka, and in particular his Senin works, his more kind of psychological works, uh, this will be right up your alley. You'll enjoy this. Just do work your way through those first few chapters because they do take a bit of effort to get through. But overall, well recommended. Now, as is worth mentioning, this actually did used to have a release on uh, Book Depository on Amazon, uh, but it's gone out of print since then, and the only way you're going to be able to get your hands on it are through Akadot if you want a physical edition, or an upcoming uh, Tezuka Kickstarter, which you'll be able to add on in your pledge to the whatever uh, digital manga publishing are choosing to kickstart from Osama Tezuka's catalogue. Or if you're simply looking for a digital release, uh, you'll be able to get your hands on that through emanga.com. But unfortunately, those are the only ways you're going to be able to get your hands on this release. It's a shame, but that is how it's going to be. So overall, I recommend this manga, particularly to Tezuka fans. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to first-time Tezuka fans. There are other series that are a lot easier to get into. But if you're a fan of his Sinan work, this is definitely a no-brainer. You should definitely pick this up. Because as soon as the story hooked me, it hooked me. Thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye bye